So with all the possible talks about leaks of the exams, I really want to talk about the following question, which is how would Cambridge actually catch the cheaters? Now, actually, there are a variety of different methods we can use to actually catch cheaters and actually find out who they are. So I'm going to go through one very important technique, which is quite surprising even for a very low sample size. So let me show how it works. Okay, so we're going to start our hunt for these cheaters by actually taking a very strange situation. So imagine you have popcorn in your microwave. Now, I'm sure you've done this at home. Notice how many pops we get as we actually put the popcorn in the microwave and turn on the microwave. And we've made it. So we've exploded all the popcorn, at least hopefully. And notice the shape of the graph. Most of the pops are actually happening in this middle section between, say, 7 seconds and 13 seconds. And we have this kind of shape. So if I draw a line actually on these corners, we know we have this so-called bell uh, curve shape here of the pops of popcorn. Now, it's not just in popcorn that this actually works. Many what we call continuous variables have this kind of symmetrical bell-shaped distribution. So we have heights, we have blood pressure, lifespan, and also, most importantly for this video, exam grades also follow this bell curve distribution. So generally it looks like this. Now, if you've done some A-level stats, you might know some of this already. Here, so the middle part here, this represents the mean, but it's a symmetrical distribution. So this is very important for this video, which is that the mode is equal to the median, which is equal to the mean in a perfect world. So notice all the averages that we're used to from IGCSE are represented by this part in the middle. Now, the range of the um, normal distribution goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, and we have an asymptote to the x-axis, so it never actually touches the x-axis. And the total area under this curve is 1, which means that all our results, if we put them all together, will give us 1. So it's the whole distribution of our sample size. Now, we're going to be using this to actually test out whether there's actually been some cheating going on. We also need to be aware of something called the central limit theorem. If you do IB high level applications, you're probably familiar with this concept. And you can see it's quite a confusing a definition here, but let's just keep it very simple, which is if you have a sample size uh, equal to or greater than 30, then basically the distribution of exam grades, for example, will look like this. So it means the sort of B slash C will be roughly in the middle. And then we've got the D and E grade students at this side. So fewer D and E grade students and then the A and A star on this side. So for a sample size of 30 or more, we expect the majority to be in the middle, so B slash C, and then the DE grades, we have fewer of those, and we have fewer of the A and A star grades. If you heard this phrase norm referencing, then this is what we are talking about. So I'm sure you're thinking at this point, okay, it's very interesting how the normal distribution works, but how does it actually help me catch cheaters? Okay, let's take a sample set and let's see how we can find them. Okay, so what I've done here is actually set up a sample size for you. So I've taken a number of different exams here, and I've done this by percentage rather than the total amount of marks, but it doesn't really matter here. And notice the uh, distribution of grades, just like I said in the previous part here, is generally clustered around the middle. So most people are getting these middling grades, some people are getting these top grades, and some people, unfortunately, are getting the lower grades. And notice if I do this so-called non-cheater distribution, we have this same shape that I showed you in the previous part of the video. Now imagine we've got a section that have cheated essentially. So what we're expecting then is say some of these people, let's say the 55 to 60, say three of them actually ended up getting 80 out between 80 and 84%. So if I put, change this to three and change this to 14, and let's say some of the people here, so the 11 people here, let's say yeah, some of them also cheated and got the same grade. So if we've got seven of them, we've got four left here, and then we've got seven extra here, and we get 21 here. What you're going to notice here, and this is really important, is that we have kind of two peaks. So if you draw a line up, we've got a peak here, 
and then we've got another peak here and then we go back into our standard normal distribution here. So notice we've got a peak here and peak here. That means it's so-called bimodal. This is the key word in this particular video. And that means we have two peaks. We have a peak between 70 and 74% and a peak between 80 and 84%. And even though this is a pretty small sample size, if you add these together, I've got about 100 results here, you can start seeing the development of this bimodal distribution. And as long as we have more than 30 samples, we can start seeing this. The more samples you get, so this is pretty obvious from a sample of 100, but imagine you've got a certain part of a country that you suspect has cheated, and you've got thousands and thousands of results, and this bimodal distribution will become more apparent. So the use of a bimodal normal distribution is an excellent way of detecting, even when a very small sample size, we've talked about the central limit theorem, where we only need a sample size of 30 or above to actually start seeing this idea of bimodal normal distribution. And in fact, when you get a bigger sample size of even like 100 or 150, so you're taking even one or two specific schools, you can then start seeing that kind of distribution. Now, you have to take into account, there could be other reasons for a bimodal normal distribution so for example a test that's been written where you have people that really understand it well and not understand it so well so the bell curve is not so smooth but it's an excellent tool to at least start that conversation about has there been possible cheating in a very specific school or a particular part of a country so if you'd like more information about how to catch cheaters and expose them, then please do let me know in the comments below and we could talk about other statistical methods that Cambridge could use to then expose these cheaters.